All right, so today we are going to make flow line maps. Um, and a few important things that we're going to learn over the course of the, the screencast is we're going to learn how to make these very nice uh, curvy lines. We're going to learn how to put text on those curvy lines. We're going to learn how to make sure your arrowheads here are the right size. And uh, yeah, I mean, in theory, we're also going to learn how to make this one thick and this one thin, but you probably already know how to do that. So let's do this. Um, I've already gotten us started over here um, with the uh, world map, and uh, we've centered it on Ireland and included the U.S. Japan was just too far away for me to include here, so they'll survive. So the first thing we need to do is make this nice blue background. And it's really easy to do that. All we got to do is draw out a blue rectangle. Um, it'll cover everything. But all you need to do is object, arrange, send to back, and now we have uh, an ocean hiding behind all of our continents. Okay, so first thing we need to do, we need to draw some lines. Now we are going to use the curvature tool right here, which uh, looks like a pen with a little squiggly line coming off of it. And that's basically what it does. So the first line we're going to draw is from Ireland to the U.S. And so we click once to give us a starting point, and then we say, okay, we want to go in this direction, and it just looks like a straight line. But when we click again, you can see that the line is starting. Oh, this isn't going to hold. Here, I'm going to change the color of this background. I'm actually going to get rid of this background now, just so we can see these lines a little bit more easily. All right, so let's do this one more time. Uh, you start clicking, put some an anchor point, and as you draw more lines, it will make them nice and curvy for you. Um, so that will be the end of our line. I hit escape. The issue being, oh, this doesn't look like a line, does it? It looks like a, I don't know, a slice of ocean. So what we need to do is we have the fill color right here. Uh, we'll change it up here. So we'll change this fill color to nothing. And then we'll make the stroke color. If you hold down shift whenever you click this, um, it'll give you another uh, alternate way of picking colors. Um, and then we'll make this black. We'll make it a little bit thicker, um, just so you can see it. So there we go. We have something coming from Ireland to the U.S. Let's do it one more time. Uh, we'll go from Ireland. We'll circle around to this side over here for the U.K. Great. Looking good. We'll make Japan go off the bottom. Curvature tool. Click, click, click. I'll just hit escape here because don't need to draw it all the way there. Um, I'll draw one going to Italy over here. And we will draw one headed to Germany. The Germany one ends up being problematic because it's so short, it's difficult to put all the text on there, but so it goes. All right. Now what you're going to want to do is we're going to write text going on these lines. This is probably one of the more difficult um, parts that you're going to have to deal with when making these maps, uh, and you'll struggle and you'll sob a little bit, but it'll be okay in the end. So first thing we're going to do, we have, uh, let's see, United States, 26.3 million. Um, we're going to put along this line here. So let's say we, we made this line incorrectly. Let's say you know we want it to be a little bit curvier. We can just go back to the curvature tool and we can add points into this uh, just by clicking. And then we can move these points in order to adjust how we want our line to flow. So let's say this is how we want the US one to do. So we move all these anchor points, um, and it's a little bit more fun. And if we want another one right here, we just click, and then it gives us another point that we can deal with. All right. so. Uh, we want to put some text on here, so we take the text tool, and normally the text tool you can see has a little box around it um, with a cursor inside of it. If you get close to a path or a line that you've drawn, suddenly the, the text tool changes, and it changes to the type on path tool, duh. Uh, pretty self-explanatory name. We're going to click here, and we are going to be able to type on the path. Uh, does this look good? No. All kinds of th stuff has gone wrong. Uh, our text is on the wrong side. Our line has apparently disappeared. Uh, everything has gone wrong. So 
First thing we're going to do is we're going to flip this text around to be on the top of the line. And the way we do that is we make sure it's selected and we go to type, type on a path, type on a path options. And in case you can't tell, we're going to click flip right here. So what flip is going to do is if we click preview, we can see it's going to flip it to the other side um, so that it's no longer upside down and it is on top of the line. So we're on the right part of the line. We can now type United States uh, 26.3 million. But the problem is now uh, the text kind of disappeared on the end. You know, I kept typing and it's no longer there. So the problem is that the text only wants to be, here I'll zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. We have a line right here and a line right here. And those lines are the beginning and the end of our text. So if we click this and we pull it on over, you can see it's giving us more space to put our text in. Um, additionally, we would like this to be centered. So this is gonna be this bar right here. You can see how the cursor changes. This is the left-hand side. So if we just pull the left-hand side over, it'll move it down. And there we go. So 26.3 million for the United States. We'll bold that so it looks nice. Um, and there I say, this is good. It's great. It's right there. And you say, no, it's not good because our line disappeared. So what you need to do is whenever you do type on a path, it takes away all of the styles of your line. So the reason why we didn't make the line real thick and give it an arrowhead and all of that before we put the text on it is all of that is just going to go away. So what you need to do is take the white selection tool, the direct selection tool, and then kind of move your mouse around until it goes onto the path. Once you're on the path, click it, and we're gonna size it to, uh, I did a little bit of math, I have an Excel sheet here. Um, that divides the exports by three and then by what a trillion and then gives us the width of the line supposed to be. So 8.77 uh, points is what we're looking to do here. So wait, 8.77. If you don't have the stroke palette up, um, your screen might look, let's say your screen looks like this. Um, what you need to do is window stroke and this will come up um, and you'll type 8.77. And you'll be like, oh, it's still not there, possibly. Problem being now, um, wait, white selection tool. Problem being that the stroke is actually white here. So we need to click that, we need to make it black. So now we do see an 8.77 pixel or 8.77 point weight line. Now we need to add uh, an arrowhead on the end. We do that by going to show options, change arrowhead to seven. This arrowhead is way too big. So we're going to size it down, size it down, size it down, size it down. Generally, you can go to maybe say 20%, 25% um, and it'll look pretty good. So now the line looks good, but suddenly our text has gone wrong. Now, when you're dealing with text um, on a path, it wants to be right up on the path. It wants to be right up on the center of that line. So what we need to do is either add or subtract spacing between the bottom of the text and the line. So the way we do that is we need to go window, type, character. So we're going to bring up the character window, and you probably have your options hidden right now. Probably looks something like this. Um, we need to click down here, show options. And I don't know why none of these actually have words next to them, but if you squint, you can see that this one here is called the baseline shift. And it's the difference between where the bottom of the letters want to be and where you want them to be. So we can push up, 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 up to six point, And then now it's above the line. If we want it to be below the line, the problem you often have is you think, oh, we want this to be below the line. I'm going to go type, type on a path, type on a path options, and I'm just going to flip it to the other side, right? But it's not going to flip correctly, right? Because now your text is going to be upside down. So what you need to do is if you want the United States on the bottom of the line, instead of having a positive baseline shift, you just have a negative baseline shift and it moves it down uh, to the bottom for you. So we'll give it a, a negative 16. That looks pretty good. We'll we make the font a little bit bigger, push it a little bit further, further away. Um, and yeah, I think we're good to go with the uh, United States. 
So now uh, let's go up here. We'll do the same thing with the United Kingdom. So we don't set the width of the line yet. We don't put an arrowhead on it. We just go directly to text on a line. We get closer and closer and closer and closer until we see the uh, type on a path tool appear. We click and we say United Kingdom. What was the measurement for that? 17.8 million. 17.8. And you're like, oh, I can't see any of this. Um, this is a tragedy. So what you have to do is, once again, at first, we're underneath the path. We probably want to be above the path. But we do need to move the front and back of the path. So make sure that you have the, let's do the white selection tool all the time for this stuff. You don't always need it, um, but it's best to stick with the light select, white selection tool. So this bar right here is the beginning of where the text is. So we're going to click it and we're going to move it on this way. This is the end. We're going to, this looks like it's probably a good spacing for it. And we had what, 17.8 million. Uh, let's actually make this not bold. It's kind of awkward that we don't have that much space to work in, but such is life. Uh, so now back to the white selection tool, we need to make this path come back. So we know it's there, it's just hiding. We just move until we're on it. Great. We want to give it a little bit of a stroke. So we say get bigger, get bigger, get bigger, get bigger, get bigger. We can't see it though. Why can't we see it? Oh, the color is white. So we need to change the stroke to black. And now we can see our line there. Uh, the number we are gunning for is uh, 5.94 for our weight, 5.94. Yep, just a little bit smaller. And number seven arrowhead, probably my favorite. 30% for that. Uh, let's, let's shift this a little bit, let's shift this a little bit. So if you grab the first, first bar, it's the beginning. If you grab the last bar, it's the end. If you grab the bar in the middle, it shifts all of the text at once without making anything larger or smaller. So that's pretty good. UK 7.8 million. Now let's do the same thing for Germany. We're just going to keep doing this um, again and again and again until we've done all of these. So Germany 7.8 million. Uh, we take our text tool, take our type tool, uh, get nice and close to the path. Then we say Germany 7.8 million. We're not going to be able to type that whole word, even if we make the text smaller. Mm. Yes, we can. A little bit smaller. All right, great. There we go. So now we have Germany 7.8 million. We need to select this ghost of a line here, give it a little bit of weight, give it weight of 2.59. We need to make it black. We need to give it a little bit of an arrowhead, number seven arrowhead. And to make that arrowhead, well, let's stick with 30 for all these. It's looking pretty good. And bold the word Germany. I think we're looking pretty good. You can see that the million gets a little close to the arrowhead there. So I'm going to use this first bar and I'm going to drag it back. And then I'm going to decrease the baseline shift so that it's a little bit closer to the line. Uh, maybe we can do the same thing with the, the United Kingdom, just a little bit, just a little bit. And maybe push Germany a little bit out. 3.5 is probably good. Great, so Germany 7.8 million. And now it's time to do Italy. Italy is 2.8 million and the size is 0.93. So type tool, click right by there, Italy. And that is 2.8 million. Let's get rid of this bold here. Make sure we're using the direct selection tool to find that path. It's what, 0.93 for the weight, 0 0.93. Automatically black, loving it. Arrow seven, 30%. That looks a little bit small, so let's up it to 50%, just because our line is so thin that you can't really see much. I'd like to move um, the Italy text a little bit further to the right. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it on over. That's looking a little bit better. Great. And now it is time for Japan. Japan is uh, 
3 at 0.78. So uh, just as a reminder, if we wanted Italy to be on the other side of here, if instead of on top of the line, we want it below the line, let's say we did it with Germany, uh, just simply because Germany has a lot of, not very much space here, but a lot of letters. All you need to do, you don't go to object or type, type on a path, type on a path options. You don't flip it because when you flip it, you see the text becomes upside down. So we're going to cancel that. All you do is change the baseline so that it goes to the other side. Sometimes it ends up with weird spacing. Uh, you can change the spacing by this one right here uh, by changing the tracking. And it pushes the letters closer and closer together until they're where you want them to be. So we'll do 90 just so it looks you know, kind of normal. Um, remember we'll center it by changing the start. There we go, Germany, 7.8 million. And now it's finally time for Japan. So we'll click here. We'll take the type tool, we'll get closer and closer and closer. Great, Japan, 2.3 million. It is unfortunately upside down. How do we change that? Not with baseline shift. What we have to do is we have to flip it so it's readable. So we're going to do type, type on a path, type on a path options, open it up, always do preview, and then we're going to select flip. You can't see it because it's moved off of the screen. It's moved all the way down there, uh, but it's definitely there. So now that it's in the right direction, we're going to get closer and closer to this bar until we see the little icon change. We're going to drag it over here. And then we, if I kept dragging it, all the text would disappear because this is the end line here, right? So what I can do is just, I can drag the middle one so it drags all of the text, uh, or I could have just expanded the end and then move that over. So this still has the, uh, the tracking from Germany. We see right here it's still at negative 90, so we'll just make that zero so it spaces it out normally. Um, we'll make this bold. And now we need to thicken up uh, the stroke. So one problem you'll run into is you will say, great, wait, uh, five or something like that, and suddenly your text will go crazy. That is why you need to use the white selection tool. So by using the white selection tool, you make sure you are only selecting the path and not also the text. So 0 0.73, I believe is what Japan was. Uh, we don't actually need to bother with the arrow on the other side of that just because it's off screen. Um, and now, looking pretty good, we can put a background on it. So we'll draw out a square. We'll say we don't want a stroke on that. We're going to hold down shift when we click this so we get the color picker. And let's see, that's a pretty good watercolor. And then we're going to do object, uh, arrange, send to back. We're going to give this a title. Uh, Irish exports, I forget what year this is for. You should probably do that if you are a real good person. And there we go, looking pretty good. Um, good work, Ireland. Uh, so yeah, we learned uh, how to make those nice curvy lines with the curvature tool. Uh, we learned how to use type on a path in order to get the text on here. We used to use the options to flip it so it's not upside down. Um, and then we learned how to use the uh, beginning and end bars in order to format the text where we want it to be. So looking pretty good. Good work, everybody.